Hello, I am Pastor Toby Philpart, moderator of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. The Florida East Coast Baptist Association aims to effectively do ministry through evangelism, missions, and Christian education. In a short period of time, we have been able to do so. We've created nearly 100 covenant partnerships as of date, allowing us to fund over $1,100 to each of those respective areas. But we have just begun. Our goal as we approach our annual session in February is 150 partners. We can achieve this goal only with your help. So please help us make an impact in kingdom building and experience the spiritual joy of knowing what it feels like to be able to proudly say, I too am a covenant partner. My name is Melinda Collins and I am president of the Women's Department of the Northern Fellowship and I too am a covenant partner. Good day, I am Pastor Benjamin H. Parrott Sr. I am grateful to serve as the president of the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association District Congress of Christian Education, and I too am a covenant partner. Hi, my name is LaWanna Parrott, department head for the youth and young adult of the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, I'm Pastor Howard Bebar Jr., Northern Fellowship President of the Fort East Coast Baptist Association. I'm too a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Woodrow Hay. I'm an administrative assistant for Fort East Coast. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Deacon Raymond Smith Sr. I am the president of the Layman's Men Auxiliary for the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. And I too am a covenant partner. Hello, I am Angela Shellman. I serve as chairman of the scholarship committee of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Reverend T.T. Shellman Sr. I'm the first vice moderator for the Florida East Coast Baptist Association, and I too am a covenant partner. Hi, I'm Sister Gloria Jackson Davis. I'm the Woman's Auxiliary President of Florida East Coast Baptist Association, and I am a covenant partner. Hello. I'm Calvin A. Davis, Sr., Pastor of Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, third Vice Moderator of the Florida East Coast Missionary Baptist Association. I, too, am a covenant partner. Hi, I am Pauline Stinson Scott, the President of the Women's Department of the Southern Fellowship. I, too, am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Larry Lovett. I am the second vice moderator of the Florida East Coast Association. I too am a covenant partner. Hello, I'm Sanja Philpart. I am a member of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association and I too am a covenant partner. Hello, my name is Pastor Dimitri Ford. I am a vice president of the Northern Fellowship of the Florida East Coast Baptist Association and I too am a covenant partner. My name is Samilia Shellman and I represent the Florida East Coast Baptist Association as the Junior Red Circle President of the Florida General Baptist Convention, and I too one day will be a covenant partner. Good evening, our brothers and sisters. Pray all is well with you. On this Thursday night, many of us have been blessed in our workshops, our teachings thus far, and we've been blessed in the last two nights with Reverend Johnson and Reverend Rump. Uh, tonight, uh, we have another preacher from Preacherville. He too is a son of the kingdom, Reverend Jeffrey Mack is our immediate past Congress president of Christian education, also uh, served as the state Congress of Christian education uh, president under the Florida General Baptist Convention banner. Uh, Reverend Jeffrey Mack, come, sir, and utilize the gifts that God has blessed 
you with as we receive our friend and our brother. And let me not close by telling you what the late great Reverend Arthur Jackson Jr. would have told us even on a Thursday night. Thursday night is a mighty good night. You don't have to wait until Sunday morning. Somebody got saved on a Thursday night. God bless you, Florida East Coast. God bless you, Reverend Jeffrey Mack. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, let's live the house. Let's praise him. He's worthy of all of the praise. No matter what the circumstance is, open your mouth and praise him. Let's sing this choir. Come on.
Jesus. the more you tell us who he is. come to rejoice and be glad in it. We're just so thankful and honored to be able to preach in this joint session. We just want to say good evening to our brothers and our sisters, to the moderator and his cabinet, and to all others in their official places. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We pray that you all are being safe during this pandemic, but we want to come and give you a word from the Lord. There's a word found in Psalms 106, 106, so commence reading at verse number one. We're also thankful to have our lovely wife with us here today, this evening, to help us uh, with her amen. So I brought one with me. Psalms 106 from the New King James Version, verse one says, Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does right righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have toward your people. O visit me with your salvation. Verse 5 says, that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. For a few moments with the help. Of the Holy Spirit. I simply want to talk about the Lord is good subtopic. You ought to thank him for what he has done. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, God, as always, for every opportunity to allow us to be able to come and stand behind this sacred desk. God, we pray now, as always, that you would hide us behind the cross, that they might be able to see you through me. We pray, God, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart would be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. So, God, we pray now, as always, that your word may go forth with simplicity yet with power, that it may convict, convert, convince, and compel, that someone may conscribe their wicked ways, saying, I yield, I yield, I can't hold out no longer. And thou art the potter, we are the clay. Continue to shape and mold us into what you would have us to be. And we'll be so careful and so kind to continually give you all praise and glory. In your son Jesus' name we pray. And those that love the Lord say amen. How often have you been wrong or even done wrong and asked God's forgiveness only to repeat the same sin again? We've told the lie and asked God to forgive us only to lie again. We've said things like, Lord, if you just get me out of this one, I won't do it again or I won't make the same mistake again only to repeat. We say, Lord, if you bless me this time, I'll do right or even do better next time only 
to repeat. We've said and done some things in our lives that should have caused the Lord to be angry at us. Now, don't misunderstand me that there are times when the Lord will chasten you and I. Because Hebrew 12, verse 5 through 6 says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise, here it is, the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves. He chastens and scourges every son and daughter whom he receives. So you and I ought to thank God for his mercy. Why? Because his mercy endures forever. In our text, the psalmist acknowledges the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. And he also reminds Israel about their sins and the Lord's mercy. So I thought it not robbery this evening to, to talk about the Lord is good or subtopic. You ought to thank him for what he's done. Psalms 106 says, uh, said you ought to thank him for what he's done. Psalms 106 is one of the two Psalms that go together. Psalms 105 and 106 represent two very different ways of telling the same story. If you read Psalms 105, Psalms 105 tells Israel's story from the point of view of God's faithfulness because of his covenant to Abraham and his descendants. But yet in Psalms 106, it reviews the story from the point of view of Israel's unfaithfulness to that same covenant and the same period of history. While looking at Psalms 106 uh, and its litany of sins, 32 sins to be exact, I want us to reflect or remember how we were and how God showed us his mercy. The children of Israel sinned repeatedly and God disciplined them repeatedly, but he did not cast them away as they deserve. Somebody ought to shout right there and thank God that he did not cast you away as you deserved. Instead, he, he remembered them, his covenant. Verse 45, and, and restored them. So therefore, Israel's history is as much the story of God's mercy and faithfulness and long suffering as well as the story of Israel's faithfulness and their unbelief. So in fact, my brothers and my sisters, the background of Psalms 106 uh, and their repetitive sinning fully shows the patience of God. Someone say patience. The patience of God. It is that, is that your story? That God shows his patience from the background of all you have done. Is that your testimony to be able to look back over your life and thank God when you look back that you can recognize that God showed his patience in the midst of all that you were going through. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm the first to raise my hand and thank God that when I look back over my life, I thank God that all that I've been through, God showed his patience and his mercy. I should have been dead and gone. I should have been drowned. I shouldn't be here today, maybe in a psychiatric ward. But when I look back over my life, I thank God he showed patience and mercy. That, that, that's, that's your life with all of, of your sin and fully it illuminates the patience and, and the mercy of God. And if you are like me, you ought not be ashamed to shout out and tell God, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. So I don't know how you feel about it, but you ought to thank him for what he has done. Now, we don't praise God because he is wonderful, and we are wonderful too. We praise him because he is kind 
Here it is, to us even when we sinned, and he's merciful to us when we don't deserve his mercy. Yeah, I believe I just said something. Verse 1 of our text says, praise the Lord, the psalmist says, oh, give thanks to the Lord, he says, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Isn't it interesting that at the very start, uh, the psalm is, is writing the, the national confession of sin. As he addresses God on his own behalf, asking God to remember him and to save him when he comes to him for aid. Look what he says in verse 4 and 5. He, he said, after he said, praise God, he, he said, Lord, remember me. Remember me, O oh Lord, with, with, here it is, with favor, with, with favor you have toward your people. Yeah, toward your people. He said, oh, visit me with your salvation that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may with your inheritance. He said, Lord, why are you blessing others? Why are you bringing them out? Lord, bring me too. That the psalmist is certain that, that God will deliver his people from their captivity because he has delivered them, he says, in the past. He, he says only this time the psalmist wants to be included in the blessings from the Lord. I don't know, I don't know about, about you, but, but, but I, I, want, I, I want to be included in, in times of God's, God's future blessing on Israel. Don't, don't you? When, when God is blessing them, I, I want God to, to, to bless me. Whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't, don't do it without me. I, I want, when God is passing by, when the favor of God is moving into place, I want to be in the midst. I don't have to be the primary, but I want to be part of the one that God is blessing. That's why when God is moving through the church, when God is moving through the neighborhood, when God is moving in your family, when God is moving around you, you don't have to be the primary one being blessed, but I want to be around blessed people. Because if you hang around blessed people, you know you, you're blessed. I want to be blessed in the city. I want to be blessed in the field. I, I want Deuteronomy 28. I want the favor of God to overtake me. I don't want to have to look for it. I want it to overtake me. If, if so, we, we have to do what the, the psalmist does. He, he, he confessed his sins. He, he confessed it. Then, then, then he, he recalls God's past goodness. He says to you, and look to him or serve him faithfully and see all that God will do now and in the future. Somebody ought to shout, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So somebody ought to shout, glory. Somebody ought to say, the Lord is good. In, in verses 6 through 30, the psalmist, I'm almost finished, confesses, he confesses their, their sins and he includes himself. I, I like what he said. He, he, here it is. He, he said in verse 3, blessed are those who, who keep justice and he who does righteousness at all times. He said, Lord, remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have toward your people. O visit me with your salvation. He said that I may see the benefit of your chosen one. But then he, he, he says in verse 6, he said, Lord, I, I, I said all that. He said, but Lord, we, we've sinned. He said in verse 6, we, we've sinned with, with our Father, we, we know they've done wrong, but, but he, he said, Lord, we, we, we're including that too. And I, I, I know some, some of us don't, don't want to admit that, that you've done wrong. And some of the things that, that you've done, you, you picked up by inheritance. Because you know what they say sometimes when you do wrong, mama say you act just like your daddy. You, because they, they look at what has been done in the past and, and they look and see the same thing. Have, have you ever looked at your children and see some, some similarities, some traits, some things that you've done when you were little, some things when you got older and you see them doing the same thing? That that's because if you're following in their footsteps. They're imitating you. He said, I know our fathers have done wrong. He said, and we've done wrong too. We, we've, we've, we've fallen, fallen short. He said, we have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Yeah, he said, we, we have done wickedly. The psalmist, is, is, he's celebrating uh, in verses 1 through 5. 
But in verses 6 through 39, he switched from celebrating to confessing. And, and that's what's wrong a lot of times in the church. We, we'll celebrate, we'll, we'll shout how good God is, but, but nobody wants to give a testimony of what God is bringing you through. You, we want everybody to think that we have arrived, but, but I want to bust a bubble and let you know, if, if you want to get glory and praise from the Lord, you've got to be willing to let people know you've fallen short, you've fallen down, but you didn't stay down, and you ought to thank God he reached way down and picked you up, and when God picks you up, and when God brings you back in to the fold, you ought to be able to stand and tell somebody not only what he has done, but what God is doing right Right now, he still has his hands on you. I don't know how you feel about it, but I thank God that he has his hands on me. That even when he exposes my sins, even my hidden sins, because he has his hands on me, he won't let me fall too far. He says we, we have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done Wickedly. Sometimes it's good to recall your past. Not, not to dwell on it, but as a reminder of the grace and mercy of God. Sometimes my wife and I, we sit around and we just reflect back and sometimes with tears in our eyes, just thank God for where he's brought us from. Remember, time, time when we we moved in in a, a townhouse, and the first time uh, out, out and on our own, and when we moved in townhouse, we, we didn't have any furniture, uh, no no couch to sit on. All all we had was a uh, a camping table, two camping tables that came with four chairs each, lounge chairs with cup holders, and that's where we sat and ate. But we we were appreciative of what we had. But the thing about it, we, we didn't get complacent back there, but as we, we were faithful over a few things, God allowed us to be able to go out and buy uh, a, a couch and a love seat, and then he allowed us to go out and get some other things. But, but every now and then, you ought to remember where he brought you from. I don't know how, how you feel about it, but I hadn't always driven in luxury, but I thank God for the hoop that I had. I, I thank God for the struggles I had. I thank God that he has brought me not part of the way, not half of the way, but God has brought me all of the way. And if God takes everything I got now, I appreciate everything that he gave me because Job said, naked I came, naked I shall return. So you don't hold on to anything. You just be a faithful servant over what God gives you and God will bless you with more if you learn how to thank him for the little that you have. Someone under the sound of my voice need to know that, that God is waiting on you to confess that iniquity or that wicked thing that you have done. Oh, you can come and hide and take communion. You can you can hide behind your, your title. You can hide behind your makeup, but you can't hide from God. And if you want to be real with people, you got to be real with God. You, you get real with God, then God, God will take care of you. But you've got to be willing to confess. First John 1 John 1.9 says if we confess our sins, if he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And here it is, and cleanse us from all un righteousness. You, you can't shout you love God, but yet living low. Mm, I believe it just said something. You, you, you can't shout you love God, but yet you're not living the way God wants you to live. You, you ought to thank God for where he's brought you from. And if God has brought you from anywhere, you ought to thank him for your present future. In order to move forward, you've got to clean up your past. You, you've, got to, you've got to take the hinges off, off them closets and, and allow God to take all of the skeletons out in order for you to move with power in your present future. In, in a very similar manner, David in chapter 9 of his prophecies acknowledges the guilt of his own iniquities and those of the people. But both Daniel and the writer of this psalm learned that the only way of pleasing God is to institute, here it is, a strong course of self-examination. 
Michael Jackson said this way, if you want to make the world a better place, you've got to take a look at yourself and make a change. You've got to be willing to look at yourself in the mirror. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you've got to be willing to confess because, listen, God already knows. What you've done, that's what Psalms 139, David said he knows my thoughts are far off. Even before I think them, he already knows what I'm going to say. He already knows if I really mean what what I'm going to say. So you've got to be willing to confess it. You can't sugarcoat, you you can't hide from some people, but you can't hide from all of the people. So we need to learn how to examine our lives and confess our sins, past and present. So he says in verse 7, he says, our, our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They, they did not remember the multitude of your mercies, but rebelled by the sea, the red sea. He said, nevertheless, he, he saved them for his, here it is, his name sake. He, 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 he saved them for his name Say, so I want to leave you by letting you and, and I know like the, that the psalmist r- reminded them. He said, God, I, I, I know that, that you are good. And I, I know that we, we've done like our fathers have done. We sinned and committed iniquities. He said, we've, we've done wicked things. But he said, I, I remember when, when they were at the, the, the Red Sea. Uh, when you, you brought them out of Egypt by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. <laughs> and when they got to the, to the Red Sea, they, they, they rebelled and, and told Moses, why did you bring us? out here to die <laughs> that, that we should have stayed in Egypt they they wanted to go back where they came from <laughs> so, so I see Moses going to the Lord and the Lord saying to Moses while you coming to, to me he he said what is in your hand <laughs> Every now and then God has to remind you what he's done in your your past. You you remember he spent time with Moses on the mountain showing him that everything he needed was right in his hand. And once he he remembered that he he had a rod in his hand and what the rod was able to to do in Pharaoh's house. That that the same rod that that Pharaoh kicked them out with the the same rod had power because he had faith in God. So so here he is. God said, what's in your your hand? I I want you to know, he he says, all I have is a rod in my hand. Somebody in him, you need to understand you may not have a whole lot in your hand, but but every now and then you need to have the, the word of God in your hand. If you got the word of God in your hand, you're able to have power to, to be able to move on. You have power to, to be able to, to be more than a conqueror. He said, well, on. I got a rod in my hand. So, so he says to him, I need you to stretch out your rod. Can't you see Moses stretching out his rod? Telling the children to hear them. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. So somebody in him needs to understand that the Lord is good even when you, you had a red scene uh, even when uh, you don't know uh, how you're going to make it uh, if you just look back uh, see where the Lord uh, had brought you from uh, then you know uh, if he brought you from bond uh, that the red sea uh, is nothing before you uh, while they stood there uh, that the Bible said uh, that 
like that same clown that was guiding them it moved from in front of them it moved behind them it became a god but the bible said dr johnson that the bible said that the clown it was darkness to pharaoh but it was light to the children of israel i want to let you know if you let go let god have his wing god will he will see you through me. Look at the red sea. The Bible says it parted all that night. God had him go through on dry ground. The psalmist said we rebelled by the red sea. He said but nevertheless he saved him for his name sing. I don't know how you feel about him but I thank God he will save you for his name sing how many in here know that there's power in the name of Jesus how many in him know that there's power in his name have you ever been in trouble have you ever called on the name of Jesus hadn't the Lord hadn't it brought you around somebody out there all the say I know that's right the Lord brought me out God will I said God will I said God will God will see you through his goodness transcends time his goodness transcends places his goodness transcends people he is good all the time in the face of every event in your life God is good he is good in the light he's good in the name he's good on the mountain top he's good in the valley he's good the day of blessing he's good in the day of pain hey he's good in peace he's good in turmoil He's good in plenty And he's good in poverty Yeah He's good when I'm short And he's good When I'm in sorrow He is good When I can't see him He is good When I can't see him He's good When I don't know what he's doing God he is Making a way Out of no way Good evening now Thank you for the East Coast joint session. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to preach the word. But I got to leave you now by letting you know you ought to look back and thank God for what he has done. Hadn't he brought you from a mighty long wing? Say yeah. Say yeah. Yes, sir. The Lord is good. The reason why I know he's good. He took my sins, marched them on up. The Bill De La Rosa, they stretched them wide. They hung them behind. But they forgot what my Jesus said. He said, and I'm, if I be lifted up, I'll draw me all men unto me he died I said he died they took him down laid him in Joseph tomb he didn't stay them three days later he got up I said he got up good evening now he got up with all power and because he lived I can face tomorrow because he lived all fear is gone Somebody in here huh? all to say yes sir huh? the Lord is good huh? Ow! the Lord is good you all to thank him for what he has done the psalmist in Psalm 106 was just reflecting back on the goodness of God then he reminded God about his favor. But then he came back and said, well, Lord, I, I just got to tell you, we, we've all sinned. 
like our forefathers, we've, we've done wicked and, and iniquity. We, we've done all this. Matter, matter of fact, Lord, I, I, I know some of the things we've done. I remember what our forefathers at the Red Sea, how they rebelled. But because of your name, you brought them out. And I want to say to you, listen, it's because of his name's sake that God wants to bless you. But you've got to remember, in, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of an election coming up, you've got to remember that the Lord is good and remember what he has already done. And you ought to thank him for where he brought you from. He brought you from a mighty long way. God bless you. Have a good evening. We pray that something was said that would encourage your hearts and let you know that God is still on the throne and the Lord is good. And you ought to thank him where he's brought you from.